Hey everybody, it is part two of the Touch Start demo. How excited are you to meet everybody else? Because I'm so excited. Um, once again, I will be, I'm streaming this live on Twitch. So YouTube, I'm sorry, there's probably going to be some comments and some updates and alerts and stuff. But you know what? It's fine. I hope that you enjoyed the first one. Listen, I can't wait any longer. There's also a cat at my feet. Hippo, come here. Come here. Okay, hold on. Yinny, you haven't met my cat. Everybody, this is Hippo. Yeah, meow. What? This is Hippo. She's my lady. She used to be hyperthyroid, uh, but not anymore. Hippo, say hi. Hippo, what are you, Hippo, I gotta play games. All right, I guess we're doing this now. The wet wick noticeably quieter without their leader. Most of the bloodhounds have dispersed, or in a few cases, fallen asleep beside their drinks. Got any rooms left, or did my lot grab them all and sleep it off? The bartender, who I now realize doubles as an innkeeper, slides a key onto the counter. You know, I always keep the corner room open for you and your escapades. Am I an escapade? Hippo's now the streamer. Leander's laugh sounds slightly strained. Oh, oh, hi, Hippo. And I always appreciate it, but you're mistaken. This is just for my friend, Egg Toast. That's me, Hippo. Sure, sure. Stay as long as you like. You two have fun. He thinks we're gonna fuck. Leander has... He's one of those. You can't trust him. He brings all of his dates here. Escapades, huh, hippo? Leander clears his throat. Then holds a key out to me. Okay, hippo, you're getting your hair all over me. But I hesitate. My coin purse barely holds enough for a day's worth of meals, let alone a room. How much do I owe you? Nothing. Bloodhound rates. My treat... Okay, Hippo. Since you shared your secret, food, drink, and a warm bed. Anything anything I need? I need Curus in my in my uh, room tonight. That's what I need. Carefully, I take the key from him. It's small, but weighs heavy in my palm. He never expected to have a warm bed in Euridia, let alone free meals. I planned to steal whatever I needed to get by, no matter how dangerous. Oh, because I'm a thief. Thank you. hair. Go explore, Egg Toast. You may find, god damn it, Hippo, in Iridia, each leading to different answers, but if you need a reprieve from what haunts you, come find me. Just be careful. I nod, taking in one last look at the gleaming bronze key before tucking into the pocket of my cloak for safekeeping. Leander gives me one last friendly wave before I depart. The air clings, sodden and heavy. Without the morning crowd, the sunless streets look barren and bleak. Even the peddlers are long gone. Only a pair of crows remain quibbling over stale crusts in a gutter. I feel a ridiculous pang of envy. At least they've got a reason to fight. I've never felt so lost. Curus and Leander both made it clear that the Cenobium can't be trusted. But I came so far. <laughs> Done so much. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. I need to see Cenobium for myself. If only to satisfy my curiosity. I should have asked someone at the bar for directions before leaving. Oh, what's happening? I'm about to turn back when a shadow passes over me. A cloud, I think, until a puff of hot breath tickles the back of my neck. The shadow runs down the streets in rivulets. Formless dark spreads the ink into blotted shapes. Claws stretch, a muzzle splits open to reveal long, jagged teeth. A growl rumbles so low and deep I can feel it. I want to run, to scream, but I feel trapped as though the slightest movement or a single breath will snap the jaws around me shut. No, I won't let it end like this. If I'm going to die, I want to see what got me first. I steal myself and turn. The shadow vanishes as quickly as it came. 
I'm left standing in the middle of the street, alone except for a figure reclining in the shade of a nearby stoop. It's gonna be Catboy. It's Catboy! A monster. Okay. Listen, listen, listen. That much is clear from a glance. That one could nearly be mistaken for a human if not for the tuft ears. The tail curled around his ankle. Or the dust pink eyes with pupils that sharpen like needles when they fall on me. Our eyes meet and the monster uncrosses his long legs. Oh, it's an offering. Ugh, people? His hair gleams a shade of red that reminds me unsettlingly of blood. Where it curls around his collared throat. Jumpy, aren't you? His tone is so light and careful. I knew it! Sassy catboy energy! That I glance over my shoulder to make sure he's speaking to me. When I look back, the stranger props his chin on his knuckles and regards me with an inscrutable little smile. Did you see the shadow just now? It was massive, moved like a beast. Even as I speak, I'm aware of how ridiculous I must sound, but the stranger's smile doesn't falter. The only beasts I've seen are Wick's drooling regulars, though this did catch my eye. <gasps> he stole my key! The key to my heart. With a flourish of his hand, my in-room key... Excuse me, do you see this leg down here? Is it... What is it, K? No. It's... What is... What is the... Shit. I should know this. Is it P? What key removes... No, that's... Okay. That's history. K... L is history. Did they... Have they not enabled the key that removes... The text box? Excuse me. I need to see this thigh, please. It, yeah, hippo. You agree with me. What is it? What is the key that removes the tech box in Renpai? With a flourish of his hand, the in-key room key appears dangling from his finger. It turns on its chain, glittering when it catches the light. My hands fly to the cloak's pockets, and sure enough, find them flat. He cricks his finger. Ew, he's a thief like me. He cricks his finger, beckoning. I've already taken two steps forward before some stifled instinct stops me. Something feels wrong. I'm still on the edge, thrumming with so much adrenaline that the stranger shadows flickers on the edges of my vision. I always attract the worst kind of attention, but I can't get rattled now. Who says... Who said that's my key? Where did you find it? Adrian, thank you so much for the follow. Where did you find it? How did you even find it? The key, I mean. What can I say? Oh, whoops. I'm a sucker for shiny things. Me too. He smiles wild, wi wide enough to reveal pointed canines. Okay. I saw you drop it. You really should be more careful. Sitting like this, somebody might take advantage. A bald-faced lie and said without a hint of irony. There's no way I dropped the key, but I can't think of an explanation for how it went from my pocket to his hand. He took it! Egg! I approach the man, careful to keep an arm's length away. He doesn't look dangerous, but the most deadly ones never do. Like Leander?! The stranger's chain softly clinks uh, with the tilt of his head. His ears flick. Keeping your distance? Until I figure out how you managed to rob me... I feel like I'm a thief. I should know how he robbed me. Yeah, I am. You think I stole your dinky little key from all the way over here? Oh, he's hot. Whoops. He gives an exaggerated sigh. I'm good with my... Alert. He's good with his hands, but not that good. Do I really look like a common thief to you? He's got me there. The sheer fabric of his sleeves alone would be too expensive for most street thieves. Hell, his shoes look like they cost more than I spent traveling here. And then there's the shop behind him. No matter the city, parted pink curtains only ever mean one thing. Is that a euphemism? I'm not looking to buy, and I doubt I could afford your services anyway. Lucky for you, I don't charge. Excuse me, are you a woman of the night? 
Do you offer sexual services? The man was the tips of his tongue over a fang, and for the first time since I stepped into, the, into that shadow, I feel something other than dread. It's called hoardiness. My face, my face, my face grows hot. That's, this, that's not what I meant, Baka. I'm flattered, really. Were sex my trade? I might make an ex. God damn it, he's not. Kwame, hello. I might make an exception for you. How about half off for a handy? Listen, done, done. I have my money. Or you could just hand over the key. Listen, egg toast, you're such an agua fiesta. Ask nicely, and I might even let you tug my tail. This is me. I am this cat boy. Kwame, we're playing a demo called Touch Starved. It's amazing so far. Just throw it here. So some spindly little street urchin, Uni, a sea urchin, can snatch it and run? Hippo, where'd you go? She slinked out. He raises my key and tilts his head so he can watch it dangle back and forth. I suppose I could just claim your room for myself. Listen, we can share. Not that I'd be caught dead slumming it in the wick with the rest of those slack-jawed imbeciles. You're obviously not from around here, so tell me, traveler. What misfortune brought you to this wretched place? His voice practically dips with derision. I'm not telling you anything. Hmm. What could have possibly drawn you to this dreary little pig pen? I wonder. He listlessly watches the arc of the key swinging around his finger. The weather's shit, the food's dreck, and there's entirely too many monsters for a human to feel safe, unless... Dagger-sharp eyes flick towards me. They gleam with amusement. Unless you're just dying to consort with... How did you know I'm a monster fucker? By now, my embarrassment has worn away, leaving simmering impatience on its place. If this is a shakedown, it's the most frustrating one I've ever experienced. Oh, fuck yeah, I'm flirting back. How did you know that I spent all my money starved and nearly died in a swamp just so I could crawl into bed with the first thirsty monster I saw? That's not me reading myself. That earns me a burst of breathy laughter. He gazes at me under his dark lashes. Aren't you fun? I am. I'm actually... Listen, I'm very funny. Ask chat. Chat thinks I'm funny, right, chat? Could you be any more obvious? I have been told subtlety's not my strength. So, your place or my... Oh my god. Um, probably yours. I'm staying at the Wick. Oh my god, I'd invite you if I had my key! If I only had my key, then I might be able to invite you up. His languid gaze glides from me to the key in his hand back. Come, take my hand and we'll go together. The more he flirts, the more convinced I become that this is some kind of trap. Listen, this is fine. I'm fine with this trap. No matter how innocent monsters look, they always have tricks up their sleeves. Yeah, but if they fuck good, then who cares? And something tells me that this one's more dangerous than he lets on, even if he has a lovely laugh. I don't know what you want or why you're messing with me, but I'm not coming any closer until I know that you aren't going to attack. Wait, uh, you can bite. That's fine. That's fine. I won't bite hard unless you beg me. Now he's a top. He's a top. No matter what I say, he finds a way to twist my words into innuendo. This is me! Y'all, this is me. In romance form. Right here. I'm this cat boy. Even when I'm silent, he goes on as though we're having a conversation, not a standoff. Do you like dancing? There's a traveling troupe of performing in Hightown tonight. Their lutist is utterly exquisite. Truly a performance to die for. There's life in this dreadful place, and if you know where to look, you sound like you know the city well. The man gaze flickers from the key dangling from his finger. Naturally, the stump was a little more than a miserable little smear when I first arrived. High town, low town, I know Iridia like the back of my hand. What about the Cenobium? Do you know where that is? Once again, everyone hates the Cenobium. His smile vanquishes. Surely you've seen it. That absurdly large tower looming over the rest? It's a little hard to miss. 
He must mean the spire, I noticed when I first caught sight of Iridia. The sun of beam's overrated. Forget about it. Forget about it! I could show you things those stuffy boars in their limp dick tower couldn't even dream of. Go on! I've already got plans. I'm sorry. I promised I promised to save myself for marriage with Curus, okay? Oh, have you some pressing matters of the Cenobium? Lunch dates with librarians, tea time with the most esteemed abbess. That's that's my business. What's it matter to you? I square my shoulders, the amusement bleeds out of him. Your loss. The stranger finally bored of his tedious game, extends his hand towards me. The key rests oh no, we bored him. No, we were doing so well, Egg! Egg, we should have just we should have just gone back to my place. Oh, we failed. We failed. The key rests on his palm, neatly dividing skin and leather. Oh. MC rolled low on charisma. No, why? When he makes no other move, I reach for the key, but as soon as my fingers graze smooth brass, his hand springs shut around my elbow. Okay. Hey. He yanks me down, and I stagger. Oh, okay, right, right, right in the middle of the town square, sir. We could have we could have saved this for later. My soul is slipping onto the steps. For a sick moment, I fear my bandages. No, I don't. Will unravel under his touch, and he's careful not to disturb them, even as his fingers dig it. His fingers dig into my arm. Lord Jahai, why do people say they know something like the back of their hand? I don't know where that phrase came from. I don't even know the back of my hand that well. Also, FXX, thank you. I missed I missed you all as well. I knew I smelled blood. You reek of death and the road. Oh, oh, hello, eyes. Excuse me. I mean, that's because my arm got ripped off. And that fucking... Oh... Excuse me? Excuse me? You you know about my husband, Kyrus? Y'all, they they were lovers. They fucked. Enemies, enemies to lovers. And that fucking doctor go on. Listen, tell me all about it. I need to know dish me the hot goss. And what, uh, his voice, one silken, lowers to a smoky growl. Okay. The shadows around him seethe and boil as he pulls me closer. Please, go, please, please, please. Three, some, right, Brian? Inside voices, three, some, three, some, three, some. Come on, come on. Can't you, like, hate fuck or something? Also, Emrys, welcome in. And something else. He murmurs against my throat, nose grazing my... I would not say let go. We're just gonna ignore that I said that. I try to twist, twist away, but he doesn't budge. His breath trails down my neck, send, mm, sending a thrill of dread through me. But just when I fear he'll bite, he takes a deep whiff instead. His wide, flat eyes gleam with naked hunger as he gazes. I mean, I was naked earlier. He gazes up at me. Not quite human, not quite monster. Seems we're both. There. The stranger's ears flatten and he releases me with it. No, no, who's ruining my moment? But I yank my arm back, massaging it where the grip left the grooves. Listen, my arm just got attached in the bandages. The stranger twists around to watch a woman duck out of the curtains from behind him. Her pressed uniform bears the insignias of Cenobomb. FX, you're gonna have to ask Ash about that one. I leave you all for, what, ten minutes? And you're making trouble again. Will you quit harassing the tourists? The stranger there, I take it, rolls his eyes and flashes the cleric a withering smile. So suspicious. So suspicious. Can't you see this is a friend of mine? He a natural liar. He grins at me and his tail swishes minutely. The woman purses her lips at me, clearly unconvinced. I open my mouth to correct him, but Vare cuts in. 
I was graciously offering my dear friend some free advice. Though his voice remains light and cheerful, his expression darkens. Danger is drawn to you like a moth to flame. It will always find you given time. The woman clucks her tongue as though she's heard the recital 102 times. Word of advice, don't take free advice from lazy foxes lounging in the streets. This crook would sell water to a drowning man for the sheer enjoyment of it. And that's why we want to fuck him. She shrugs off a wilting look from Bear. Oh, please, any friend of yours knows it's true. Now hold still. Bear rises gracefully at her approach. He pushes his hair aside, so it drapes over one shoulder, exposing the long line of his neck. And suddenly it draws on me that the jingling I heard earlier wasn't coming from the harness attached to his collar, but a leash. A heavy iron chain wound around the hitching post and a padlock to the back of his collar. Vera posed deliberately to hide his leash from me. Interesting. The woman produces a key ring from her pocket. She rifles through a dozen identical keys before selecting one and slotting into the lock. Sizzle! Welcome on in! Thank you so much for that reset for 29 months. Yay, it's my subversary. Hello, Anna. I got work today, but just dropping by. Love you. Thanks for stopping by, Sizzle. I hope work goes well for you. Come on, unless your friend's tagging along on our merry little soulless hunt. They're hunting for soulless inside the city? Words momentarily fail me. Uh. The woman regards me with a polite, if tight, smile before marching down the stairs. Ver lingers. He stretches his arms over his head with a yawn, and I try not to stare at the way his stomach flattens when he arches his back. I'm, I'm, I'm actually staring very much so. Your little secret's safe with me. Try not to get yourself killed. Vare hops off the stoop and bounds after the woman. His tail sways merrily as though he hadn't just lied and threatened me. Did you try that thing I mentioned, the Lavlonian knot? That the one where you take three fingers and actually don't tell me. Knowing you is disgusting. Vare's airy laughter echoes down the street. It's only after he and the cleric have vanished from sight that I realize I'm still missing something. Wait! Reflectively, I shove my hands in my pockets and find it, the room key. I ease the key from my pocket and smooth my thumb over its teeth. So I try to recall a touch, a tell, or any hint of Vare's sleight of hand. I'm a thief! I should be able to tell this stuff! But I can't figure out how he did it. All I know for certain is that the Cenobium saw fit to leash him, a fate I could share, if that's what the, his vague warning meant. I let my eyes drift skyward, past the lanterns gently swaying in the breeze, the Cenobium faintly visible through the haze. Just one glimpse is all I need, then I can pull this all behind me. This time the key goes into my coin purse for safekeeping. That's three out of five. It's easy enough to follow the sluggish river that spits Iridia in two. A colossal bridge arches over the dark water below. I cross as quickly as I can, climbing ever uphill toward the distant tower. Hours later, legs aching, sweat beating from my forehead, I finally find what I was searching for. The Cenobium of the Luminous Void. This makes me think of Elden Ring. Are we maidenless? Maybe it was a trick the whole time and he never had the real key, Wingy, that's true. Have a good night, FX. It stands on the highest point of Eurydia, surrounded by cold white walls. Well-dressed people stroll down the walkways, paying no attention to the massive tower of the midst. I'm the only one standing before the gates. I crane my neck up and up until the top of the Cenobium Tower disappears into the clouds overhead. I frown up at the gates, wondering what horrible traps they might contain. Despite their delicate beauty, there must be more to them than meets the eye. They're transformers. Knocking seems like a terrible idea, but I don't see any other way of making my presence known. I could just shout. Hi, Synchronous. I'm halfway up the steps when something moves in my peripheral vision. A shadowy figure crouches... It's Sad Boy. Crouches beneath one of the white walls. They reach out and tug on a vine, as if testing its strength. Oi, you there. The shadow vanishes as quickly as I spotted it, and a gaunt-faced man in the crypt's charcoal uniform marches up to the step toward me. Oh, hey, it's Elden Ring. It is, Brian. Ugh, another tourist. Get out of here once you're done gawking. A dismissive wave accompanies his, equ his equally dismissive words as he turns on his heel without even waiting for an answer from me. 
I look back at where I saw the intruder, but there's nothing, just the leaves blowing gently in a cool breeze. I step away from the gates, hopelessness washing over me. Hello? Hel Hello? A whisper so close I can feel the warm brush of breath on my skin. I instinctively jerk away, but there's no one beside me. Halfway down the staircase, I spot a woman swaying in the breeze. She's gaunt as a rail, her blouse moth-eaten. -e I'm unable to take my eyes off her, not because of the way she smiles a little too widely, or the way her tussled braids look unbrushed for days, but because her eyes shine a vibrant, unnatural crimson. She's a vampire. I'm both entranced and unsettled by their subtle glow. Or a zombie. These days, you need a miracle to get in there. I'm unsure of how to respond, or even if I should. Say nothing. I don't want to respond sarcastically to this person. I don't know them. All right, Mech Frenzy. Thanks for stopping by. After the experience I just had, I'm not too keen on indulging strangers with small talk. Despite my silence, she maintains her unflinching stare and smile. Lucky for you, I have miracles for free. Oh. Okay, whatever she's selling, I'm not interested. My words came out in a tired breath. Interesting. So Spacebar takes away the text. That's very interesting. Spacebar normally helps it go forward. No thanks. Well, we found the button. I start down at the stairs. She abruptly steps in my path. She turns her back to me, and before I can react, she slips her fingers under the lacing of her collar, stripping out of her blouse in broad day. Okay, okay, it's orgy time. What do you do? As worn fabric unveils bare skin, my panic is smothered by cold horror. A misshapen, sunken scar carves into the woman's body. Pitted, gnarled skin snakes down her shoulders, blooming from a gaping hole in the back of her neck. You know who else has a scar, Leander? Space bar, yes. The suspense, Kwame. Being her delightful self, just caring about others' feelings while simultaneously assuming their species. Listen! Listen! We've seen so many different monsters, why wouldn't there be a vampire? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. A shuddering breath escapes me. The fuck? Whatever disease this woman had ate away at her from the inside out. How is she able to move or breathe? It's impossible. She shouldn't be alive, and yet... The power to cure anything can be yours, too. The power of the sea spring. The woman slides back into her blouse and deftly laces it up. If I've caught your interest, then follow me. It's only a short... Something tells me this is wrong. A short walk away. Without another glance, she leisurely strolls down the center beam stairs, loose braids bobbing behind her. The edge of her scar peeks out from under her collar. I stand there wordless, until I manage to regain my bearings. It's a twisted miracle, but a miracle nonetheless. This could be the stupidest decision in my life, but what choice do I have? I take a final look at the Son of Beam's gate, shut gates, then follow her down the steps. We could go back to Curus! We descend from the higher streets, leaving behind their gilded decadence as we cross the river. This is bad news, bears. The wet derelict districts feel more familiar to me. But the crimson-eyed woman takes me farther, then farther still, until I'm met with an all-too-familiar sight. My gut lurches when I face the open horizon. The city's outskirts are hardly recognizable in daylight and probably safer for it, but venturing beyond Aridia's walls is a gamble. I wasn't prepared to take so soon. Keep going straight, and then the sea spring will reveal its- Nope, nope. Listen, last time we were here, we lost an arm. I bark out a bitter laugh, loud and involuntary. I'd rather not. Are you kidding? It's not safe out there. You're as safe inside the city as outside of it. Truthfully, the territory before you is the safest is all. <laughs> this is like, this is fine. What do you mean territory? The region belongs to ice. Jasmine, your man is a king. 
Most people know him as a gang leader, but he's much more than that. I squint against the empty wastelands. Only a fool or someone with nothing to lose would leave the city. Apparently, I'm both. But if the sea spring cured her, I need to see what it can do for me. Do I? Do I? I set off into the waste. Over my shoulder, the woman calls after me. Good luck, egg toast. Wait, did I, did I even tell her my name? Until we meet again. My heart pounds with each step I take from civilization. For what seems like an eternity, I force each foot forward. One step, then another, until a realization hits me. I knew it! I never told the woman my name. Classic. Classic. Something pierces the horizon ahead of me. Is it, is it spine fingers again? A building nestled in a tall cliffside, but so starkly out of place, it might as well be a hallucination. It drips with its extravagance. Extravaganza and honeyed mahogany, an ornate jewel of architecture. A row of dark silhouettes stand out on the horizon. Trees, I think, until I'm close enough to realize that what I mistook for branches were spikes and jutting tendrils. Egg? Egg, we need to have a talk. You, one, haven't fucked anybody yet. Two, are falling for the most obvious things. Three, failed flirting. I'm not impressed with you, Egg Toast. Soulless, several of them watch me in the distance. Yeah, like statues. Great, I have to be saved twice in a row. I don't think I just... I don't think. I just run, exploding to a messy sprint. I push my legs as fast as they take me towards the decorated building. Flashes of last night chase me. The gushes of blood and screams of death. The smell of burning flesh and sour bile. I can't go through that again. I won't. The next thing I know, I'm dashing up wooden stairs and crashing through tower double doors. Where did I end up? I gasp for air, my lungs burning from exertion. I'm desperate to be safe, but when I process my surroundings... It's more hellscape than sanctuary. I don't know, we've got some plants in here. Blood flows all around me, overwhelming my vision with a lurid, unholy red. Instinctively, my hand leaps to my mouth. But the rotten stench of blood never comes. Instead, a smoky scent hangs in the air, sharp and spice. I swallow... Excuse me, thickly, convincing myself that it's not as gruesome as it appears. It has to be the sea spring. The place that grants miracles? Oh, there's tea. Pulling my eyes away from the pool, I take in the rest of my environment. Tall pillars flake me, blanketed in written notes. Seating pillows scatter the floor. A rustic kettle sits nearby. Someone must live here despite how eerily empty it is. Oh, I'm calling out. Excuse me. Hello? Is anyone there? My voice echoes across the cavern without response. I approach the paper-covered pillars. Maybe something here can tell me more. I reach for... Nothing! Why am I touching these? Ugh. Egg. Egg, why? Why egg? Don't, don't touch the random papers. We've watched anime. These are spells or wards of some sort. The closest one. I reach for a note in front of me. It reads, Dear Mother, don't cry for me. I'm sorry I didn't say goodbye, but we'll meet again in another life. I love you very much. From Iris. P.S. If you ever see me, never speak to me again. Did I write this? It's written perfect cursive. Cursive exists in this world. I've never seen such beautiful handwriting. I can tell that the people who wrote this are millennials because they know cursive. Before I can ponder it further, a sharp chill runs down my spine. Something's watching me. I quickly set the note back, my eyes darting around the wooden deck. But it's still empty, vacant. Hello? Finally, finally, I look towards the sea spring. The stillness hides something deeper, something wrong. Hey! Hey, you guys! I spin around and come face to face with a pack of soulless. They chitter and growl, tendrils and spikes flaring threateningly. All different sizes and species. One identical trait. Glowing crimson eyes. Okay, I see a theme. I see a theme. 
I try to back away, but my heel teeters over the sea spring. I'm cornered. Kwame, I tried to flirt earlier. It didn't let me. Let me tell you, it did not let me. Watch your step. It's deeper than it looks. The voice again. At the sound of it, the soul is freeze. There snarls quietly. Is this going to be ice? Yeah. I search for the voice's source, and I find it above me. Okay, hold on. Lounging in the rafters. Y'all, I just want to... I just want to... Now that we found the... The, the key... I just want you to all take this in. I search for the voices. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's let's get a full full look. Okay. Jazz! Jazz, where are you? It's your man's. You look lost, little sparrow. His gaze is a violet crimson. One that sears through me, leaving me feeling like a stake. They're the same eyes I've seen over and over. First with the scared woman, now with the soul circle circling me, all bound by the sea swings blood red. In the shroud of darkness behind him, there's tentacles. Shapes like ma- <laughs> I like how exactly at the same time I was like, tentacles? Excuse me, there's tentacles? Like massive tentacles twist and coil around wooden beams. I can't focus. The soulless growls ring in my ears. They're not advancing, but they could change at any second. Panic rises in my throat, and I struggle to track them. Hey! Eyes on me. My stomach rolls as I tear my eyes away from the soulless. Don't ignore someone who's talking to you. It's not polite. For a moment, anger knocks my fear aside. Who is this bastard? Listen, I'm, I'm distracted. I'm kind of distracted by the soulless about to maul me. Only on my command. I like that it said bastard. That was cute. That was a good touch. I scan the soulless again. They really aren't attacking, posturing more than anything else. You tamed them? Power of the sea spring. They're hungry, so they might bite. You could give me a reason to stop them. How about I didn't do anything wrong? Trespassing. And that's punishable by death? He gives a non-committal shrug. I call out earlier to see if anyone was there. Were we supposed to play hide and seek? Spats, when you join the stream to this picture, let me, let me, let me, let me give you a better picture. Here you go, no text box. Look at that. You get full crotch access now. Mm, didn't hear you. My voice stops in my throat. The man terse coolness is both infuriating and terrifying. I rack my ba brain for a way to defuse it. I rack my Brian. Brian? It's Brian. Defuse the situation. Uh, tell me what you want. Listen, I'm not gonna... I, I'm not gonna be that person that's like, Oh, I need help again. No, tell me what you want. I'm tough. I'm a tough boy. Tell me what you want. What you really, really want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I'm not in the mood for guessing games. Your hands. You want my hands? I see you've heard about my talents. Alarm jolts through me. I hide my hands under my cloak. Show me. Why? Won't ask twice. With a sharp huff, I reluctantly hold out my bandaged hands. Are you getting off on this? I hope so. Unwrap them. This is, this is a top. We've got two tops. I think we have three tops and one bottom. So far. That's my count. Three tops, one bottom. Heat rushes to my face and fire to my tongue. I should give him a piece of my mind. But not when his soulless are one to command from ripping me to shreds. Yet no, how, no matter how much... Uh, no matter how much I will myself to move, my body's frozen in place. I stand there for long, agonizing minute. My hands are trembling when I finally raise them. I know the skin beneath my wrappings all too well. The hideous, unnatural flesh I've grown to despise. I grip the edge of the bandages. Stop. With a weary sigh, the man slides off the beam and lands with a thud that shakes the panels underfoot. He's a monster. 
He's a monster with an imposing figure that towers over me. I couldn't tell how tall he was before, but he's big. Illuminated by lantern light, his features are longer, sharper. Subtle clinks of metal accompany each footstep. The closer he gets to me, the faster my heart hitches. What does he want? Is he going to kill me? I step backwards and find nothing to set my foot on. I forgot my back was to the sea spring. I fall right before a warm hand catches my lower back. <gasps> Shut up. How did you know I love that move? Jazz, your horn boy. He caught us in his arms. Oh no, I've fallen. I'm hovering above the sea spring, the scent of smoke and leather enveloping me. Blazing crimson eyes bore into mine. Told you to watch your step. I'm too stunned to muster a response. Like I weigh nothing, he guides me back to solid ground and steps back. Following a subtle gesture from his fingers, a s <laughs> he's like, a soulless around us disperse and relax. The shift of their demeanor is so abrupt that it gives me whiplash. The enormous tentacles, what, they're no longer in the rafters? Bring the tentacles back! Though now I doubt I ever saw them at all. Either way, I exhale a breath of relief. Thanks. Oh, he's so pained! Jazz! Ugh, protect him! Hug him! Go to him! As focuses on me as he was before, the monster pays no attention to me now. He kicks some seating pillows out of the walkways. Checks his contents of his kettle with a scowl. He loves tea. The sudden disregard is almost insulting. So that's it? I'm not a threat anymore? Never were one. Then why'd you threaten me? People get honest when they're afraid. In other words, he was messing with me. I drag a hand over my face, exhausted by the fact that this is the second time a monster has provoked me to say, I gotta stop falling for this. You're ice, aren't you? Depends on who's asking. One of your friends told me this was your territory. She also said you were a gang leader. But there's no one else here. He's Yakuza, Jazz. You're right. It was his cute eyes. I thought there'd be more people. Listen, I thought that in the the <laughs> the monster HQ we'd have more things. Ice picks up the kettle and walks to the edge of the sea spring, then dumps all the contents into the endless red. Gang took a walk. His pleasant smile stretches across his face ear to ear. Then in an instant it drops. I get the sense I shouldn't ask about his gang again. Something must have happened. I learn to recognize a real leader when I see one. It's definitely not me. Ice regrettably fits the type perfectly. Told you! Main character syndrome! He knows how to scare people and he expects submission. But it's uncommon for someone so used to being in power to be so alone. Oh, he's so alone, Jazz. He needs you. What do you, no one understands his problem except me because we're part monster too and he's a monster and we should just have monster babies together. What do you need the sea spring power for? Depends. Can I cure a curse? Probably. You mean you don't know? Nope. He shakes out of the empty kettle and starts collecting stray cups, tidying up. My frustration builds. I narrow my eyes at him in a questioning glare. When he notices, he returns with an amused smirk. Are you being irritating on purpose? Listen, Sparrow, the sea spring can cure anything. Nothing stopping you from trying it yourself. What do I have to do? Drink. Okay. Done. I got gin. Is there a funny boy? I don't have an emotional strength to help someone who is equally emotional. Jazz, you have... Did you, did you see Fox Boy? Fox Boy, I think, is closest to funny boy. Fox Boy is flirty boy. I think he's funny. Because he fucks. He's like flirty funny. You're like, ha ha ha, now fuck me. Is that funny enough? 
awkwardly funny. I feel like that's close as gonna be Leander. Diddy, where did you go? You left me. Jazz, it's too late. You chose your mans. This is your mans. This is your mans now. We can see if the other one is funny. I have to drink from the sea spring. I can't. You can go back, Jazz. I'm just giving. I'm just giving you shit. I'm just giving you shit. My eyes glide to the blood-like pool beside us. The idea of ingesting. Also, Yinny, you didn't tell me that Foxman is basically me. At least he comes with handlebars. He's at least good for riding. Like, you're not gonna fall off, okay? My eyes glide to the blood-like pool beside us. The idea of ingesting the strange liquid makes my guts churn. Is there a price? Always. Ice taps his temples with a finger. You lose it a little bit. That's it? I might have already beat you to the punch. My humor earns me an amused fang grin. We're the funny boy, Jazz! We're the funny boy. Mm, this is a little different. When you drink from the sea spring, you forget who you are. Oh my god. Quick, egg, drink from it. You are such an agua fiesta. We could be so much cooler if you just drank from the sea spring. Your mind combines with everyone who drank before. Human, monster, soulless. One big happy. Do it. Do it now. My blood runs cold. I've heard of these before. Group minds. As opposed to hive minds. I thought they were just rumors. I've heard whispers of cults performing rituals to bind their members' minds together. It never seemed possible. If my mind went into the group mind, group mind would be so horny. But something tells me this is real. Even if one thing doesn't add up. Your eyes are red too, but you obviously haven't forgotten who you are. Before I can finish my sentence, ice strides past me towards the entrance. Time's up. Let's finish this later. Wait, already? You barely told me anything. Came on a bad day. Listen, I can come somewhere else if you'd rather that. I've got somewhere to be. There's still so many questions burning on the tip of my tongue. But my frustration spills out before any of them. I was told to come here for help. Egg. Egg, you need to have a mind of your own. Stop listening to people that you don't know. <laughs> Egg. Egg is just like the gullible little innocent person that's like, I was told that to, I could get some help here. And I believe, I believe in the power of goodness and people. Egg needs gloves. Egg. I want to put Egg through like be like, egg, listen. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. I'm your mentor now. One, you need gloves. Just just buy a pair of gloves. Two, stop listening. I mean, listen to the sexy people, but only enough to get them to fuck you. Don't, don't trust them otherwise. Egg is very plot naive. Egg is just like, I'm a sponge, tell me what to do. I should have been named Sponge Toast. But instead I get threatened and kicked out. I'm so naive. Yeah, and right, and you were joking, right? Watch your tone. I'm nice. Are you? You? Her? But you don't want to ruin the host's mood. My skin prickles. The feeling of being watched washes over me again. My eyes dart back to the sea spring. A lone ripple dances on the quiet surface. Ooh, that's a good sentence. I like that sentence. I take Ice's advice and clamp my mouth shut. Ice approaches a nearby solace. A lanky dog like... Oh my god, don't kill the dog. It's a dog with six legs! <gasps> and tendrils! Can we keep it? Can we adopt it? Oh, I want it! Several sets of crimson eyes adorn its side. Oh, it's just a baby! Y'all, we have our pet. Its forked tail wags rapidly. Oh, it's a baby! Oh, I want it! When I squats beside it, he runs his fingers through the tendrils, scratches its chin, and pats his head. 
A gentle smile plays across Ice Lips. The affection he holds for the soulless is painfully clear. It's a puppy! I dip my eyes away, my stomach fluttering at the tender sight. The tendril sight? Get it? It's getting dark out, so this pretty girl will guide you back. You almost just died in Minecraft for this stream? It was worth it, Synchrous. Following a short whistle. A short? A short whistle. We don't want a short whistle. From Ice's lips, it trots over to the entrance obediently, tail swaying. I watch the soul as warily. Pretty is not a word I would use to describe it. It's the idea of protecting me sound absurd. If I decide to drink, how should I find you? Find someone with eyes like mine. They'll point you in the right direction. Brian J. Shark Whistle, do not. We will not sell any of those. I'm sorry, we've taken the Shark Whistle off of the product line. We had too many complaints. But think it over. Once you drink, you can't go back. It's a lot to process, but I give a small nod. At least I know I have another option for a cure. As disturbing as it may be. But it, like, that's not going to cure me. I'm just going to forget, and then I'm going to have the same issue with my hands, right? <laughs> we fired that designer. <laughs> it was supposed to say short whistle. How did you fuck it up? All right, Nivy, thanks for hanging out. Y'all, give Nivy some, some mod love. I follow the solace at the measured distance and watch it nudge against the giant doors open with ease. When I'm about to, b b b when I'm about to cross this th threshold, I sneak one last glance behind me. My heart skips when I meet Ice's eyes. I'm about to snap my head away, but he just flashes me an easy smile. Till next time, Sparrow. I'll buy you a drink. Hell yeah. Don't buy me that nasty ass beer, the pickle beer, for scaring you. I don't trust myself to do anything but respond with another curt nod. Touch start. I didn't know this game was about me. Oh, hey, people, guy. It's a Kickstarter right now. It's uh, been a lot of fun so far. You should definitely check it out. The demo is available on their Kickstarter. Outside, more crimson-eyed soulless scuttle about. It's hard to believe it's the same threading pack from before. They chase each other in circles, roll around in the bog's mud. They pay no attention to me as the dog-like one escorts me away. It's an eventful trip sometimes. The soulless looks over its shoulders at me and makes sure I'm still following. Hey, game player. Welcome on in. Dust darkens the sky by the time we reach the city. The soulless sits and looks at me expectantly with familiar crimson eyes. I want to pet the dog! As nervous as I am, I carefully glide my fingers through the soulless tendrils and scratch behind its chin, just like Ice had. It pushes and Oh, it loves me! <gasps> Rumbling with the sound akin to a purr. The vibrations are soothing, almost healing as my fatigue. Oh, we found a baby. It's an Iridian street dog. When it's satisfied, the soul spins around and scampers back to- No, come back. Baby, come back. Vanishing into the darkness. It's barely my first day in Iridia, and I've already encountered so many things I thought were impossible, tame soulless being one of them. My head spins. Maybe I should call it a day. Maybe I, I mean, maybe I should go back to Curus and ask him if he wants to come over. Nightfall creeps all across the streets of Eurydia, this city labyrinthine. They have the same dictionary that I do. Labyrinthine, even in daytime, has become a worn, treacherous alleyways. I have to say their word choice has been very chef's kiss. The streets are completely deserted. If I hadn't been here earlier, I would have thought this part of the city abandoned. I make my way through the winding streets, doing my best to keep my bearings towards the wet wick. My steps slow when I hear rustling in the dark. I strain my ears, but everything is still. The silence playing tricks on me? Oh shit, we're gonna, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna do a save here. Something is wrong. The, fa the fine hairs on my back of my neck prickle. The frisson of discomfort. I don't know frisson. That's actually a word I don't know. We're looking up frisson. I mean, I can sort of guess what it is, but we're going to look it up. Frisson. A sudden strong feeling of excitement or fear. A thrill. 
Okay, I like that word. That's a good word. A version of discomfort running down my spine. Something is wrong. I like frisian. I get it when listen when listening to music. My eyes dart from side to from one side of the street to the other, searching for movement, but the shadows are as deep and dark as pools of ink, and I see nothing. I can't stay here. Closing time. Time for you to go home. I need to reach the busier part of the city. Drawing my cloak tighter around my body, I hurry on my way. Though I keep my eyes sharp and listen intently, there's only one sound on my own footsteps. As the moments pass and nothing happens, I begin to wander. Maybe I really did imagine that noise. I turn the next corner and my thoughts come screaming to a halt. My head spins and the world ooh, is blurring as adrenaline rushes through my veins. Only one thing is clear amidst the haze. It's finger spine again! The soulless that attacked the caravan! Baby, I'm back! It's crouched over a dark, indistinct shape, a body. A garland of intestines... Listen, listen, listen. You gotta stop spilling intestines, my dude. Blood grouts the cobblestones for a mercy. The soulless is too distracted by its meal to have noticed me. Maybe if I just tipped you by. Secret ending? Let me romance this. My feet fail as heavy as stones, but I can't just stand there. Holding my breath, I take a step backwards. When the wit... The wit... The wet slurping sounds don't debate. I take another, then another. Then a shard of glass crunches under my... Egg. Egg, you fool of a took! The world seems to slow to a crawl as the solace raises my head. Blood dripping from his tendrils. Every single one of its bulging eyes fixes unblinkingly on me. Enchant Tigris, hello. Thank you for so much for that 57 months. Oh, hey, sees what game and is playing. Excuse me while I take a sip of my drink. It is very good. You can play the demo now on their Kickstarter. It's really here. It's come back for me. We can only run. And I'm off like a shot, running for my life through the darkened streets. Behind me, a piercing bay splits the silence and heavy footfalls pound after me. Why did I send me back when he knew that nighttime brings demons? I have questions. My heart thunders in my chest and I take turns at random, trying to lose it in the maze of streets, but I can't seem to shake it. I can hear its breathing now, a wet, fluttering rasp growing closer and closer. The same claws that severed my arms swipe out. I duck, save my pure reflex, finally, and skid around the corner. I take three running strides before the bottom drops out of my stomach. Oh shit, we should get that. A wall twice as high as me bars my way, a dead end. When I turn around, the soulless looms in the entry to the alleyway. It's no longer running. It doesn't have to. As it prowls closer, my thoughts race. Some of the buildings lining the streets are lit. There must be people inside. It's a long shot, but... We save. Try for the nearest door. No one is going to help me. I whirl, grabbing at the handle of the closest door. It turns completely. The hinge is creaking as I push, and I feel a flash of hope before weight hits the door from the other side. Damn it! And it slams shut. The click of the lock turning is grimly fatal. Oh, no! In this wretched world, few people will stick their neck out to help their own flesh and blood, never mind a stranger. The soulless gives a rasping hiss. It's the only warning I get before it lunges at me with flash of claws. I hurl myself to the other side, but the slick cobblestone betrays me. I fall, sprawling over the rough stone. I like that. Oh no, I've fallen! As the soulless looms over me, I scramble away from it until its back hits the wall. There's nowhere left to go. It descends on me for the kill. But the impact never comes. Yes! Get saved again. It's the last one. I warily crack one eye open. And then the other, not sure whether I should believe what I'm seeing. Hold on, hold on. A hooded figure crouches in front of me. One bloodstained hand outstretched. Okay, I like the dagger. I like the dagger. The crotch is good. We've got... It. Okay, this is good. This is good. 
moonlit sliver is the edge of their stiletto knife. Their face and hands are splattered with blood and the solace. They're pretty. You know I'm also a sucker for white hair. White hair. My eyes dart past my unexpected rescuer to the misshapen form behind them. The soulless many eyes. Also, they're covered in blood, which I also love. Long-haired sexy man! Once restless and vibrant, now looked dull and waxy, a red pool spread slowly from under his body. Numb with shock, I can't help but stare. It's dead. After all the people it killed, after nearly killing me twice, I can hardly believe it. What if it was its the mom? Like, what if the baby... Like, what if it's a mama? Well, I gingerly take the offered hand. A stranger's gaze dips onto my bandages. Pale lips part on the brink of a question, then close again. With a strength bellying their slight frame, they pulled me to my feet. As soon as I'm on my two feet again, they pull away from me and start wiping the blood from their... Oh, God. Don't wipe off the blood. Just keep it there. Stay there. They turn away from me stiffly, leaning over the soulless, gangly body. With their back towards me, I realize that they saw, I saw their hooded silhouette at the Cenobium. You're shorter than I thought? You saved me. <laughs> yeah, puts, puts the red blood in their hands and then wipes it through their hair. God, Jazz, I still can't believe I fucking called that in Yakuza. I can't believe Nishiki did that. I'm a fucking genius. God, I can't believe I called that shit. That was wild. You saved me. I shouldn't have had to. Is this the asshole man that I love? They're mean. Please be a dick to me. The white hair, the dickish attitude. Oh, I'm weak. Their harsh response takes me back to the days of all the people I fell in love with in video games. Before I can formulate a response, I continue. And non-binary? Please. He, sh he fits the type. Mean, white hair, blood, sharp utensils. God damn it, I have a type. What are you thinking? Traveling alone at night. Oh, God. Go on. Reparand me more. This is far from the worst thing haunting Lowtown. I can't make heads or tails of them. First they saved me, and now they scold me. <laughs> listen. 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 Lesson learned. I could do without a lecture, though. No, 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 no. You sh hey, don't sit down and shut the fuck up. You listen. To my surprise, they break eye contact. I bet you they're sad. Uh, their attention glides back to the soulless corpse. They examine it with an inscrutable expression. I clear my throat to fill the silence. Uh, did you forget about me? I'm over here. Um, my name is Eggtoes. I'm a thief. I'm here to steal your heart. I use that line with everybody. Min. Suddenly, Min tenses. Their blades flashes as they drive it into the back of the soulless neck. The soulless thrashes once, letting out a rattling hiss as the air leaves its lungs. Min leans on the blade, driving it deeper and deeper until there's a sickening crunch and the creature goes limp. My heart thuds in my chest. It must have been clinging to life by a thread. Min straightens up, withdrawing their blade in a single smooth motion. Better to put wretched things like this out of their misery. I'm next! Me next! Me next! They calmly clean the blood from their knife. That swift, unhesitating, lethal strike wasn't the work of an amateur. Just, just checking them out. But they don't act like any of the cold-blooded killers I've seen in the past. Why is a soulless inside the city? Min looks at me, eyes searching, before realized, realization draws. You're new here. There's no walls around the city. Solas can come and go as they please until someone is contracted to stop them. 
The Sunbeams patrols don't bother to protect the low town. Not anymore. Let me guess, you're not a fan of the Sunbeam? I wouldn't go that far. Their brow abruptly furrows and they sheathe their knife, motioning for me to follow them. No smooches yet, Lemon! It's not safe here. The vultures can smell death. I'm not quite sure what they mean, but I don't want to stay lost in the city. I trail behind them as they stride down the street. It's so dangerous. Oh, it's if it's so dangerous. Why are you helping me? I came for the bounty on that solace, and you were in the way. If only they had said you were in my way. That's, 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 that's what I'm saying that they said. Do many visual novels let you choose different player characters? I don't play visual novels that often. Um, it de no. No, they don't. I mean, it I'm trying to think of one that does. Not really. I think the thing is, like, you have your player character, and your player character can be anybody who you want it to be for most visual novels, because you choose their... You choose the choices. So essentially, it is one character, but you are embodying um, their decisions and who they are. Yeah, it seems pretty rare, and I feel like when you choose different player characters, it's sort of like... Like you're choosing variations of that character, if that makes sense. Or like what it does is like there's not a player character. You're sort of playing as different characters throughout the game, you know? Like there's different point of views that you're playing from. Uh, and you're in the way. Not killing you isn't the same as helping you. Don't count on being so lucky again or you'll be dead by sunrise. Go on. Their answer is stingingly harsh. Yeah, I enjoy that. You know what? Fine. I, j I just need to find my lodgings. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... I didn't mean to be a jerk. I hold my hands up trying to forestall any more snippy comments. Alright, I get it. I'd love to get out of your way, but I'm sort of lost. I just need directions back to my lodgings. What makes you think I'll help you? Well, you're, you look sad, first of all. Second of all, I'm the player character, um, so you're gonna help me because you don't have a choice because that's what this story dictates. Also, you love me. Nothing, but there's no harm in asking. That seems to catch them off guard. Their brow knits and they look away, scowling. And I'm the only person that will ever show them any kindness. How troublesome. Egg toast? <gasps> I, w I wasn't flirting! Curious, don't look! Don't look! It's fine. Maybe we could just have a threesome. You, me, men, you know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I wasn't cheating on you or anything. I turn surprised by the voice. Curious walks down the street towards us. His white and gold clothing is pristine despite the grime of the city. Hello, Min. I see the solace was your work. Oh my god, I love them together. He saw me, Brian! No! Min shrugs. There's a familiarity to the way they regard each other. They fucked. Oh, this seems so mean. I'm gonna do it. I didn't know you had friends, Min. I don't. Freelance work is dangerous and curious as a doctor, that's all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't think so. Egg Toads needs to get back to wherever they're staying before they wander into the jaws of another soul's listen. I'll do it again! Don't make me! It is late. Were you able to find a place to stay, Egg Toads? It's not in your pants, Curious? Can't we all just stay together? At the brothel, maybe? Come on! I'm staying at the Wetwick. Both their faces fall. Yeah, I know. I know. I didn't name it Wetwick. I see. I mean, you could offer me your place. Would you like a guide? It might be preferable to wander. Yes, please. That would be nice. 
Min clicks her tongue and sighs, sounding mightily off, put out. Going to the Marillus district, that gaudy cesspit? Come this way. Okay, yes, 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 daddy. Despite Min's clear distaste, when Curious leads down me down the street, they keep pace with us. Catching my curious glance, Min's eyes narrow. It's not safe this late. I don't care about you, but Curious is the only doctor worth a damn in this place. Mm -hmm. You care about me. You care about me. You just don't know it yet. Are you like this with everyone? The deadpan look Min gives is answer enough. I catch Curious hiding a slight smile. God, you're so fucking hot. Both of these people are hot! I suppress a sigh and resign myself to having a grumpy shadow all the way back to Wetwick. The route Curious takes is completely different from my slow meandering earlier this morning. In no time at all, he cuts through the darkened streets and twisting alleys. Ah, we're back here. It seems like half the city is poured into the Amaryllis district's colorful streets. Laughter, chinking glasses, clinking gas, gla God damn it, I can't speak. Clinking glasses! And music assault my ears from every direction. Yet the most noise still comes from the wet wick. Its doors hang open, lanterns lit. Is that's that over the back pose again? Why you do this to me? Hold on. What's this scar right here? And this ring. What's happening? This waterfall of a hair. Why are you so hot? Here we are. He moves toward the door and Min lets out an audible huff. Don't tell me you're going in. I have some quick business with Leander. Listen, Curious Fox. Ugh, fine. He still owes me for yesterday's work. They drag their feet, reluctantly trailing me to a tavern. Okay. We've got two bottoms and three tops. As soon as the doors open, a wave of sticky heat rolls over me. In the hours since I left, the wick has grown suffocatingly crowded. Curious stands out easily, a head taller than most. Even so, I nearly lose sight of him amid the sea of swarming bodies. Pardon me. The crowd parts as though answering his request. Curious glances uh, over his shoulder at Min and me before gliding through. How can anyone breathe in here? Min follows Curious at a, clip, at a clip pace. Oh, it's Leander! Yinny, well, come back! Leander is right where I left him, although he's traded places with the bartender. He holds a pair of shot glasses filled to the rim with luminous green liquid. That's arsenic! And now for the finishing touch. A flash of magic paints the glasses white with frost. You're never going to guess what's in these. It's arsenic. Leander slides the glass across the bar, and I get my third and fourth shocks of the evening in rapid succession. They all fuck each other. They're in a polycule. Ice leans against the bar, his elbow prepped on the, propped on the counter. He catches the glasses and lifts one uh, to the light before turning it upside down. The contents magically congealed. It's jello. We're doing jello shots. Stay firmly in place. You're supposed to make drinks, pretty boy. Don't tell me you're wasted already. Let Leander cook. I'm sorry, Luna. Sassy cat boy. Veer perched on the bar's counter beside ice, takes a single look at the shot glass and shakes his head. What have we here? A bucket full of boogers? Leander's nose treasure? Ew. No. You've eaten worse. Barry's lips twitch and his ears flat when Ice offers him a glass. He turns his cheek with a sniff and Ice, and ice just snickers. Yinny! No! Don't eat Leander's boogers! Don't do it! Coward. Don't tell me you're actually... In one fluid motion, Ice throws back his head and downs a shot, drinking that. A dark look crosses Ice's face. It's chewy. It's a jello shot! Chewy, wait, let me try that again. Behind me, Min grumbles. I told you this place was a nest of degenerates. Listen, Lee, listen. You're, you're one of the de degenerates. 
If it isn't curious and men. At the sound of Leander's voice, men's pale eyes grow wide. They look ready to bolt until Curious sends a, uh, sets a hand on their shoulder. I promise this will not take long. Men's eyes dart from Curious. I swear to God, if I can be in a, a fucking polycule with these two, I'll die happy. My eyes dart from Curious' hand to, f- to his face, then soften. Fine, you first. While they step forward, I linger behind, struck by a sudden revelation. All of these people I've met today know each other. Good evening, Leander. Ice. Another drinking competition, I presume. Oh, is it evening already? Could have sworn it was earlier. Just some friend, friend, just some friendly rivalry, Doctor. Nothing to be afraid of. Curious acknowledges Leander and Ice with a slightest nod. Nod? Not ignoring Vera entirely. Not that Vera seems to mind. He tilts his head and an impish smile curves his lips when he spots Min looming silently behind Curious. I almost didn't see you there, Min. Looking for your booster seat? What a fucking asshole. I love him. Min pushes back their hood. They level Vare with a cool look. I thought Ice wasn't allowed to bring his pets. The shade in here. Vare's tail gives an, gives an angry twitch. Oh my god, they're friends! At the first sight of impending fight, Leander vaults clear over the counter. He slides in between Ice and Curious. Hold on, we gotta look at this. Okay, okay, what do we spot? What do we spot? Leander's ample bosom? I don't know, I feel like there's a bottle in the way. I feel like there's this bottle right here that's in the way. I mean, he d- look at that. Look at that line. But look at look at this. 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 Curious has tiny vials. Listen, don't talk about his vials like that, Luna. Now, now, let's try and keep the peace. It's not every day the esteemed doctor takes us up on. God damn it. Curious is so hot. He's, he does! He's got a boob window. All of them, except for men, have boob windows. His arm snakes around Curious' shoulders. You are finally taking me up on that drink, right, Curious? I'm afraid not. We're merely escorting Egg Toast. You better fucking... Curious? I swear to God, if you don't drink gin with me. How else are you supposed to get adorably drunk and be like, I like you? And get all blushy. Listen, I know how this goes. You, he better have a drunk scene. Uh oh, the Kickstarter stole some. The touchdown Kickstarter stole some of your money. Good. Curious gestures in my direction, and my stomach sinks. I reluctantly step into the light. As soon as he sees me, Leander's Leander's face brightens. Egg toast. It's been too long. Everyone, this is egg toast. They're new to the Iridia. I feel five pairs of eyes fix onto me, and suddenly the bar feels suffocatingly small. My voice nearly catches in my throat. Hi again! It's me! Something something Taylor Swift song! Uh, hi. Hi, everybody! Again. Again, wait, you've already met everyone? Listen, Leander, I get around, okay? Snowy, thank you so much for that follow. Oh, wait, we gotta go. Mm. Mm. Fox boy. Beautiful cat boy. Here's... He's got a low V. Another low V. And two boob windows. Ice and Vare level me with subtlety and amused expressions. Vare's tail gives a lazy wag. We did. Not that long ago, either. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to suspect they're stalking me. He looks far too pleased with himself when I roll my eyes. We have such sexual tension going on right now. We better fuck. Like, like there is, listen, there is gonna be the easiest to fuck. Like done, easy. We already have this chemistry. We already need to fuck. The, the game is really gonna come with Min and Curious. 
so much sexual tension that it might as well be called sexual elevenson. I get okay, Brian. That was bad. Go to jail. So much tension. Okay, let's see them all. Let's see them all. This calls for drinks. What does everyone want? Gin. Look, there's the thigh that I wanted earlier. Look at that. Look at that. All right, everybody. Pick, pick, pick your person. Pick who you want to fuck. Everybody, I need to know. In chat right now. Will I stream this game when it comes out in full? Maybe? I don't know. Depends. Probably. It's my second favorite sub -men member. Why would you say such a mean thing? Don't have favorites. We're all beautiful, wonderful people. Do I have to? No, you don't have to pick one. You can pick as many as you want. Okay, here's here's my list. Ah, uh, I feel like harem style. Very is good. Very is very good. Very is very good. You get that? Um, Curious is just the fucking hottest piece of ass I've ever seen. Min, Min is my type. Min, look how giant Varus's hand is, though. I mean, Curious's hand. Look at it. You know what they say about doctors with big hands. They actually, they have to wear large gloves. That's what they say. Um... But Min, though, non-binary, white-haired asshole? That is 100% my type. And these pants? Veer, definitely good. Leander, boob window. Ice, demon. I feel like Ice is my least favorite. Leander, Leander's fourth. Uh, oof. Okay, Curious is first, Min is second, Vera is third, Leander is fourth, Ice is fifth. In an instant, all eyes turned to Leander, freeing me from my burden of attention. I still can't believe they all know each other. Yes, I can. We're playing a visual novel. Watching them talk amongst themselves feels surreal. But for the first time since I undertook the journey of Iridia, I feel a faint glimmer of hope. I think, no, I know I was meant to meet them. Yeah, because they're all fucking hot. The low, pleasant rumble of Leander's laughter pulls me from my restless thoughts. Ha, well, color me surprised. You make fast friends, Egg Toast. I didn't make any friends. I sort of just stumbled into getting in trouble. I wouldn't go that far. We're more like acquaintances. A wise man once said that acquaintances are merely friends you haven't shared a drink with yet. A wise man's... You said that. Here, last week. I can hear Min's lip curl with distaste from across the bar. Leander clears his throat and continues unperturbed. Let's toast to Aegto's health. Yeah, because I keep running into solaces. Care to join in, Doctor? You better fucking join in. Curious politely. God damn it! I swear to God, Curious. I need you to get drunk and be all adorable with a wave of his hand. How about you, Min? No. These two. These two. Directly hotties. Are you? No. Resounding pop pierces the din of the bar. We all turn in the direction of the noise. It very looks almost bashful as it accepts an overflowing flute from the bartender. Poured from a bottle so old its label has been worn blank. They serve champagne here? Since when? There pauses in the middle of licking champagne foam from his from his fingers with a coy smile. Very son of a bitch. Why you gotta do this to me? Oh no, yeah, oh no, oh, I've slipped the champagne on my fingers. I guess I'll lick it off. You don't mind, do you? And transformation as impressive as his magic trick, 
The concern on Leander's face vanishes. He laughs slight. Wait, wait, wait. He laughs softly? Wait, what? No, be my guest. I know. Oh. Oh, because Leander's paying for it. Okay, I was like... Does Leander... Did Leander have a trauma experience with the champagne once? Then he shoots the bartender a frantic look. Unbothered or uninterested in his company, Ice can't, uh, can't his head at me, a light smile on his lips. How about you, Sparrow? I did say I'd buy you a drink earlier. Damn right you did! No, 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 my treat. Listen, I don't care who's paying. Ice regards Leander over the lip of his glass. In the dim light, the glint in his crimson eyes look downright dangerous. What'll it be, Atos? Gin! What? I'll take that drink. Gin! I'll take that you up on that drink as long as it's not one of those green jello shots. Don't knock them till you try them. They taste better than they look. Somehow I doubt that, but I hold my tongue long enough for Leander to go behind the bar. He's lying, isn't he? It's just, it's, it's like Malort Jello. When I glance at ice, he only shrugs. Like I said, they were chewy. Probably poison, too. He considers his own drink, a tumbler of amber-colored whiskey. Leander, did y'all see the Dead Island 2 whiskey? I want one. Leander's tried to kill me a dozen times by now. It's always a gamble. Bear clicks his tongue in disapproval. When he finally looks my way, it's with a half-lidded gaze, softened by his third glass of champagne. Varen, Varen, me, we, we are the same. Were I you, I wouldn't let Leander put anything in my mouth. Anything? Are you sure about that? Not even them titties? He fans his fingers over his chest, voice dripping with fake reverence. What a fucking tease. The Wet Wick is one of the finest drinking establishments in all of Iridia. While you're he when you're here, you're here. It's the Olive Garden. Ye old fantasy Olive Garden. While you're here, you may as well partake in the signature watered-down drinks and the stale nut leather. Stale nut leather? Ex excuse me? There? What perchance is stale nut leather? He sweeps his hand toward the chipped ceramic bowls filled with spindly speckled jerkly that I can only assume is nut leather. Oh, so you weren't talking about Leander's pants. Got it. What is with the food in this city? An abysmal as you make it sound, this place is completely packed. like Curious's pants? It's not all bad, depending on the day. The food's edible. Ice takes a measured sip of his drink. Gotta stick around for the real attractions, though. Before I can ask what he means, Leander returns with a tumbler that he sets in front of me. Uneven chunks of ice bob in a pool of reddish-purple alcohol. Wine? I sniffed the drink suspiciously. It's my relief this time. All I smell is a sharp, clean set- Gin! The game is listening to me! My dude! Gin drinks! We got our gin drink! Thank you, devs! You gave me my gin! With an undercurrent of fermented fruit. Victory! Relax, it's just the local specialty, plum gin. Listen! As a gin connoisseur, I'm happy about it. Although, if you're feeling more adventurous, I shake my head. No, no, no. Gin. Gin, please. Leander wraps his knuckles against the bar until the group falls silent. All right, everyone, let's toast. May Egg Toast Day in Iridia be full of bright adventures and discoveries and fucking all of us. Cheers! Leander, Ice, and Vare raise their glasses in unison. Min only crosses their arms, and Curious watches with polite indifference. I dip 
I tip back my drink. The plum gin is eye-wateringly strong. Despite a sharp medicinal edge, it goes down smooth. It's gin. It's got the juice! One sip softens the edges of my vision. The next fades the din of the crowded bar into low, persistent murmur. I find myself unwinding for what feels like the first time in years. Finally! So the orgies now? Aren't you the popular one, Egg Toast? I'm guessing you met Kira's first. Yeah, and now we're married. It would be more accurate to say that I found them. He saved my life. And he put my arm back on! I merely performed my duty as a doctor. Although I must admit that I was confused when I woke up missing all my clothes. I wasn't confused. I knew exactly what happened. Leander makes a choked noise somewhere behind him. Min sighs. It's not what you think. It's exactly what you think. Aegtos was in grave condition. I could hardly treat such injuries through tattered clothes. Duh. The silence that follows stretched uncomfortably long. I look away, unable to face Kyrgios. I'm blushing. Curious his disappointment. And catch Ver snickering behind his hand. Ver? Listen, we're going to be such good fuck buddies. Ver is going to be my best friend and my fuck buddy. Like, hands down. That's my cue to change the topic. Curious isn't the only one who saved me today. I, I, like, everyone fucking saved me. I'm a pathetic egg. Don't you listen. I didn't save you. You were simply there. That's Min for you. Leander reaches for Min, but they duck under his arm with practice ease, without so much as looking his way. No touching. As reliable as they are moody. You're one to talk, considering you've neglected to warn them to stay off the streets at night. Oh, uh, am I got a little distracted. Min's only response is a short breath. At any rate, I never got the chance to thank you, Min. Don't. The less soulless alive, the better. For a heartbeat, Min's eyes flick towards Ice, and their lips twist. Ice is too busy nodding along to Ver's enthusiastic pantomime of stabbing to notice, lost no doubt in an enthralling discussion. I've had enough of this hell ho, let's go. Min and Kira share a brief look, then the doctor speaks up. Very well, but there is something I must discuss with Leander. If you'll excuse us, Egg Toast. And just like that, the three of them depart, leaving me alone to savor my gin in silence. Or so I think until I hear a voice so soft and low, it's practically a purr. Lost your tour guide? I turn to find crimson and pink eyes trained on me. It's not lost on me that they chose the instant the others left to strike. Just my luck. I had to be abandoned with the two most irritating people I've met all day. Monsters or not, there's no telling what I'll do if either of them push me again. Don't tell me Leander already snuck off to get his knob slobbered out back. He's got business with Kyrus and Min. Fair's like, exactly what I said. Two on one business. Mm, isn't he lucky? Fair, you, you and I are the same human, same fox, cat boy. I can't tell if it's the champagne or the company, but Fair has grown noticeably more relaxed. He sits with his chin propped on the back of his hand. His ears twitch whenever a hiccup shakes his shoulders. Why are you so far away? Come join us. Oh my god. Is this what I'm like drunk? Because it's very accurate. He pats the empty bar stole beside ice, but I hesitate. The smile Vera wears is sweet and distinctively sly. And with drinks in the mix, I dread how he and ice will mess with me next. We don't bite. I'm not sure about that. Just hours ago, he tried to rob me and you threatened me. Me? Steel? Surely you must have been mistaken. Hmm. You sure it wasn't me? Yes, it wasn't. Uh, yes, it was you. And then you had the gall to kick me out just so you could go drinking. He gives another one of his shrugs. I was lonely. A simpler answer than I expected, but I guess I can't fault him for that. Very suddenly slumps forward, gossamer sleeves pooling where he rests his elbows on his knees. I sets a hand on Vare's waist. How intimate, narrowly preventing him from tipping off the counter. And a lightweight! God damn it, Ver! God damn it. How about we start fresh? Begin with proper introductions, get off on the right foot and whatnot. I'll start. 
The name's Ver, Hunter Extraordinaire. Fair's right hand flutters to his chest and he bows his head, flinching when his hair falls into his eyes. Ice doesn't say anything, so I suppose it's my turn now. I'm egg toast. Fair considers me for a long moment, his tail idly swaying behind him. Then he knocks back the rest of his champagne. It's a pleasure to formally meet you, egg toast. He says my name slowly and deliberately, savoring every syllable. A tingle jumps down my spine, and I quickly turn my gaze away. I smirks at my reaction over the rim of his glass. Is something funny? No. I open my mouth and close it just as quickly. They want me to react, goading into another ridiculous game. While their sharp, cat-like eyes keep me on edge, something about this tension is fun. Yeah, it's called sexual tension, egg. It must be the gin. Thank God we felt something with the gin. A flash of white over Ice's shoulder catches my eye. Across the bar, Kira's heads for the... No, come back! I don't see Leander or Min, but it feels wrong to believe him alone without saying goodbye. I'll be back. Listen, I gotta go tell my future husband goodbye. There hums and wags a finger at me as I leave. I slip through the crowd, careful not to touch anyone. But just as I'm nearing Curus, Gah. I stagger, shoulder checked by a man with a neck thicker than both my thighs. He stares down at me, not nostrils flaring. Y'all, how long is this demo? Am I even going to finish it? Out of my way, shit stain. My words spill onto their own. I really thought I was like, oh, we're all gathered at the bar. We're going to end the demo there. You watch it. I regret them as soon as I that oh I regret them as soon as they leave my mouth. That fucking gin. That gin is good. The roughneck wheels around, shoving a bloodhound out of the way so he can close in on me. What did you say? He shoves me backwards, sending me stun oh god. I'm so I gotta get saved again. That's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I'm fine, but my heart leaps into my throat when I see the roughneck bearing down on me. You trying to start something? The roughneck freezes. Uh, I switched around those words. His fist cocked back. A group of bloodborns called by the common commotion circle him, sizing him up. For what feels like an agonizingly long moment, the roughneck looks from me to the bloodhounds. Finally, he sniffs and spits on the floor next to me. His lobe narrowly misses my cheek. Screw it. Too many freaks in the circus tonight. Um, if anyone has played this demo, let me know how much more demo there is. Should it, like, how long are we talking, Luna? He turns his back on me and comes face to face with ice. A dangerous smile spreads his, across his face. You'll do. What happens next is a blur. Ice Fist crashes into the roughneck's jaw, causing an eruption of gasp shouts and even cheers around us. YouTube, it's been great. We're gonna call it here. Who knows what's gonna happen next? Will I get, will Egg Toast get saved again? Are we gonna have an orgy? This demo is not even over. This is the longest demo ever and I'm loving every second of it. Y'all, if you've liked this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know who's your favorite so far. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.